Good morning. I'm Linda Reinstein, the co-founder of the Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization, and I'm so excited and delighted that you're joining us today. Just to be clear, ADO has always been about education, advocacy, and community, and we have stood solid for 17 years with our principles. It, as we start this program, try to use the hashtag of 2020 ADAO when you go social. It'll give the, us the opportunity to connect and share all the great information that you're going to hear today. We've come a long way since 2005. And in this photograph, you're going to see my daughter and my late husband. But more importantly, you're going to see Barry Castleman and Dr. Lim and, and so many others who are with us today. ADAO's leadership remains strong and constant. We had a fabulous film festival yesterday and today will be unmatched. In, in our academic conference and the award ceremony, there's so much to look forward to. Um, the, our first film festival yesterday, which we called Asbestos Art Advocacy and Shared Stories was a success. And let me tell you, it won't be the last. We screened Dirty Laundry, The Mother, Breathless, and ADAO's 16th staff briefing. So information uh, just flowed through our channels. And Julie Gunlock made a powerful keynote speech. Uh, and obviously, uh, Christine, Dr. Oliver, and Ellen made excellent moderators. We shared our story. You're going to hear from Mavis soon. And we're all about sharing our story and coming together as one. Today, eight countries will come together as presenters. And we are so excited about bringing Australia, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Nigeria, Portugal, United Kingdom, and the United States together for this unique opportunity. There's over 40 speakers that you're going to hear from during Friday and Saturday. So get out your pen or your, or your tablet and take notes. There is a link on the home page where you're viewing this program right now, but just in case you can see it at the top of my screen. Well, we just published our 131 page program and we are proud of the information in there. You'll see the bios of our speakers, our honorees and some gratitude, but also the tributes from family members where this is an important opportunity for us to acknowledge and remember loved ones. As we acknowledge and remember after 17 years, we are so close with many people, not just asbestos victims. Uh, we want to take a moment and remember these seven individuals. We would like to take a moment and remember these amazing people. Dr. Eula Bingham, Dr. Morris Greenberg, Paul Handley, Anna Marie Kearns, Mike Mattmuller, Anne Strickland, and Nigo from Brazil. Well, Ellen is probably blushing now in her pajamas because it's early out in California, but this conference would have never taken place without Ellen, who's ADO uh, conference co-chair. She gets up early. She stays up late. She is so patient and kind, and she does, does this as a loving volunteer. So Ellen, we thank you. Later today, you're going to hear from Rebecca Rendell from the AFL-CIO. She will deliver a powerful conference keynote speech. And then as we started the tradition after our dear friend Andy Schneider passed away, Wendy Rutterman from Pennsylvania will deliver the Andy Schneider Memorial Lecture. She has been covered through her investigative journalism, a story about asbestos in schools that you won't want to miss. We want to recognize many people who make our work possible. And in the program, program you're going to learn more about our honorees, uh, former Congressman John Shimkus, Congressman Tonko, the strong American Federation of Teachers, all of the past r -band supporters, Dr. Jackie Moline, filmmaker Judd Apatow, and of course, Barry Robson and Rob Sussman. So join us in the evening for that. Our work does require some money, not a lot because we work from home, a home office, but our sponsors recognize that the work we do is unmatched. And we want to thank our platinum sponsor, Simmons Hanley Conroy, our gold sponsor, new this year, the Gorey Law Firm, and our silver sponsor returning year after year, early Lucarelli, Sweeney, and Meisen Coton. We don't make legal referrals, and these firms recognize that they want to be associated with ADO because we are, as Barbara McQueen said, the boots on the ground trying to get this work done. Our ADO leadership hasn't changed. For 17 years, we've had these amazing champions for our, our mission and vision. 
I'm not going to read all the names. They're in your program. But recognize the three boards, our big board, our science, and our prevention, come to the aid of ADO all of the time, whether it's briefings or reviewing materials, or especially this conference. When it comes to art and advocacy, my dear friend Jordan is going to perform tonight. Art, advocacy, and shared stories is not new to ADO. I've been working on this for about 17 years. When Doug Larkin and I co-founded ADO, we knew that our sad stories about Bill and Alan needed to be shared, but we also knew there were others. So over the last 17 years, we have built a strong platform to blend art, and advocacy, shared stories, and academia. My dear friend Earl Daughter will speak in session one, and Earl is going to share some of his photography and experiences and knowledge. He is an award-winning photographer, but the poster that we're presenting, again, obviously with COVID, uh, we're holding this one, it is entitled Art, Advocacy, and Academia, and you can see Julie in the top left and many other people. Earl will explain later. Mm -hmm. 